It is hot today, and not just because it's 40 degrees in the UK! And I'm stuck inside with the studio lights on and all of the windows closed. I'm talking about the fact that today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your laptop. And this is a video I should have done ages ago because it's actually so simple. But I know it can be quite daunting to sort of get inside your really expensive bit of hardware, risk breaking something just to swap out a component to add more storage or RAM. But the good news is you've got me to go through the whole process and show how quick and easy it is, as well as a few different caveats and things you need to be aware of before you actually undertake something like this yourself. But rest assured, it's very simple and I promise you can do it. A massive thank you, by the way, to the lovely guys over at Gigabyte who have supplied this Aero 15 for this video and actually reached out to sponsor it, in addition to Corsair who are providing the upgrades and have also helped sponsor this video. So thank you. The Aero 15 is a ridiculously sleek and modern laptop. This is actually part of NVIDIA's studio range, so you've got all of the performance from something this thin. This has got an RTX 3070 Ti in it, but fundamentally this also uses DDR5 memory, which brings us on to something I think is really important because I have already made this mistake once. If you are going to upgrade your laptop, you need to check compatibility. You need to know what's in it already and what you can actually upgrade to. And the easiest way of doing this is actually just to log onto the machine, go into Task Manager, which is Control, Shift and Escape, navigate over to Performance, and here it should show you how many RAM slots you have and how many of those are populated. So on this laptop, it says two of two and it uses so dim RAM. And this is important because RAM comes in two different form factors. And if you're upgrading a laptop, you are going to need so dim. And it is a fair bit smaller. This is some Corsair Vengeance Sodium DDR5. This is top end stuff. This is a 64 gigabyte kit, which is insane. 32 a module, so very dense, also like me. And they look something along the lines of this. So definitely very small. For a little comparison, here is some desktop memory, also Corsair Vengeance. And even though this is technically low profile RAM, you can see there is an absolutely ginormous difference between the two. Clearly, this is not gonna go on your laptop, so please make sure you're buying the right stuff. Whilst having the right form factor is incredibly important, you also need to understand whether you've got DDR4 or DDR5 memory, because again, these are completely different and you won't be able to put DDR4 on a DDR5 laptop and vice versa. DDR5 is a little bit denser, it goes a bit faster, it should have lower latencies. Obviously, it's gonna depend on the exact SKU, but it's important to know which one you have. And there's some tools that you can actually download online if you're not sure what laptop you have and what you can actually put inside it. But the easiest way really is just to look at the original laptop box. This way you're not gonna risk putting the wrong model number or something in. But of course, if you know what laptop you have, just look it up online, it will tell you. But here, Aero 16. I said Aero 15 earlier, didn't I? It's Aero 16. It will say right here, memory DDR5. So we know this laptop has DDR5 inside it. There are two more upgrades that we can make to our laptop. And the next one, and probably the thing I think most people will be doing first, is to upgrade the storage. Now, it's important to know whether you have a Gen 4 compatible system, because then you could put a really fast Gen 4 drive like we're putting here today. It's going to give you faster speeds, and if you're able to take advantage of them, obviously it will give you more performance. But if you do want to go for a larger capacity, slower Gen 3 drive, that's also fine, but there's no point putting a Gen 4 drive in a Gen 3 laptop, as you won't be able to access its full rated speed. So again, look Look up the laptop specification on the manufacturer's website and you should be able to learn what it supports. There is one more upgrade that you can make to your laptop, but this is more of a side grade really than a straight upgrade, and that is swapping out the battery. We'll show you how to do this, it is very straightforward, but I would never advise buying like a third party battery with a larger capacity and putting it in the same body. It's more if you've been using your laptop for years and it started to degrade, you could just make a straight swap, get better battery life. It's not something you're gonna wanna do to a new machine, but I guess ultimately it is up to you. But personally, I would always use the original manufacturer's battery pack. But okay, enough talk, let's actually get this upgraded. And the first thing to do is to obviously clear yourself some space, but really important, make sure this laptop is completely off, not in sleep mode, completely powered off and shut down. It, is it Skepta that talks about shutting down? I think he had problems with Windows 8. Once you've done that, put it to one side, grab the magical cloth that you had hiding on set this whole time, lay it down, obviously a towel or something will do, and then put your laptop on top of this because you don't want to get it scratched. Then if you look closely, you'll see all of the screws that you need to remove on the back of the laptop. 
However, these are actually Torx 5 screws. It is going to depend on the laptop that you have, but you are going to need a special screwdriver to actually get in here. Personally, the kit I recommend is one from iFixit. This is not in any way endorsed by iFixit. I just find this is a really good kit. This one is fairly expensive. It's around about 60, but you can buy one for, I think, like half the price of this that should have the right screwdriver if you're just going to use it for this. So I'll open it up, get our screwdriver, and then the head, I believe, is a Torx T6H. Simple advice, but very effective. Always have some sort of container to actually put these screws in and take a picture if you're not sure where they're gonna go back. Because if you have different screws, the last thing you wanna do is lose them. So it's very straightforward. I will just take out all of the screws on the back panel. It's worth noting, by the way, that sometimes some of the screws are longer than others. So please do make sure you remember which screws go where. You see that? One way bigger than the other. You might be wondering why they use star-headed screws, by the way, and it's not because they want to be really evil. I think it's just they don't want people opening up laptops that haven't prepared for it, really. It just reduces the risk of anything breaking. You do have to be careful, though, because sometimes there are these hidden screws underneath. These might be because of warranty, but they were actually covered up with a little bit of black material. So I've just scratched that off. And then we have two more screws to remove. And that's why you do the whole thing very gently. Don't just force the whole thing off because if it isn't coming off and you've got some resistance, there's probably a screw that you've missed off. Now let's try that again. And just like that, way easier, the whole body underneath does just remove. And then you can actually see inside your laptop. I'll show you on this camera as it should be a little bit easier. Here we've got the battery pack, clearly the largest component. This is very easy to swap out. It will just be a couple of screws. Then we have our two SSD bays and these will vary depending on the laptop as to location. So the last one I upgraded, one of the SSDs was here, one was here. The thing is though, one of these is gonna be the boot drive and because they're exactly the same capacity, I'm not sure which one it is. I would guess is the one on the left because the last gigabyte laptop I upgraded, that was the boot drive. However, don't worry about it too much because you can just take one out, see if the laptop does boot and if it does, great. If it doesn't, then obviously you need to swap them around. We've also got an M.2 Wi-Fi module here that in theory you could swap out in the future to a more powerful one. Then we've got our RAM up here. This is of course what we're going to swap out. And then underneath this cooling system, we have our GPU and our CPU. Sadly, we can't upgrade this, but obviously in a few years time, there'll be even faster laptops if you want more performance. But let's pop this back down and show you just how easy it is. The first thing I would always do is to remove the battery just because it's a little bit safer. Don't grab it by the cable. Just remove this little plastic component and then the whole thing should Unplug like that. You're then going to need a crosshead screwdriver for all of the internals. And if you do want to replace the battery, just unscrew it from its holder. A total of three. Again, you've got like a warranty black marker on it to try and get you to not remove it unless you really need to. But then that is it, look. It just removes. You just pick it up. Bang. Battery. So you buy a new one and you would just pop it in. Really straightforward. Having a closer look at this laptop, it does actually say on the motherboard in very small text, SSD2, look, there you go. So I think it would be safe to assume that this is our additional storage drive, and then this is our boot drive because it's SSD1. So I would always start with SSD2 before you remove this, unless you actively want to upgrade your boot drive, of course. But it is incredibly easy to swap out. You just grab your screwdriver, again, crosshead, and you just unscrew the screw, take out the old one and save this for on later on and then it is of course time to install your new one so this is the mp600 from corsair very reasonably priced but very fast ssd and this is two terabytes hence why we're upgrading this laptop putting in some super fast storage with ridiculous capacity. However, it probably doesn't take a genius to work out that this has a very large heat sink on it because you can use this in desktops and get slightly better thermal performance. But as this is going into a laptop, they actually make it quite easy to remove. It's just a couple of clips like so. And then the top bit, the heat sink comes out, which leaves you with the SSD itself like so. It gets me every time just how small these things are. And it is an incredible feat of engineering. And it's an incredible feat of engineering that I can drop them and they still probably work. No, it will still work. I'm confident. But to put it back, we just line up the SSD with the slot. There's only one right way of doing this. Lower it down, use the same screw, and just fix it down. 
Now we can move on to the RAM, or as the cool kids call it, the memory. And this is the easiest upgrade I think anyone could make. Like, genuinely a three-year-old could do this. Just grab your thumbs, and then open up these little catches on either side of the memory module. And just lift and remove. They do have a little bit of resistance because there's a thermal pad underneath that just sort of holds them in place a little bit. So use a little bit of force. There you can see the thermal pad actually stuck to the bit of memory. Take this pad off and put it back where you found it. This helps the heat transfer so your RAM isn't gonna overheat. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure it's not touching any of the metal contacts. And the thing is, the ones I've removed here are eight gigabyte modules. The ones we're replacing it with, so these are a total of 16 gigabytes of storage, these are 32 each for a total of 64 gig. 64 gig in a laptop that was 16. That is genuinely crazy. But installing these is just as simple. You just have to make sure it is the right way round. So you have this little slot in the middle, lines up with a slot on the RAM itself. So here it doesn't, so I just need to turn it round, and voila, in it goes. Push it in, little click, push it down, little click, happy days. The second one might catch you out ever so slightly, as it is upside down compared to the first one. Oh, I said it was easy, I said it was easy, but on this one, where it's a thicker RAM module, I think that thermal pad might be ever so slightly too large. Okay then, I admit I didn't expect that, but no worries, it's okay, you've got me. In this situation, don't force it down. I would advise just swapping this out for a slightly smaller thermal pad, just measure the thickness or buy like a set of smaller ones, replace it, put it back down. You probably could use it without the thermal pads, but I do not officially recommend it because they're there for a reason. The pack I've got here is one and a half mil, and that is actually a fair bit smaller than the one that's on this already. So I think one and a half mil is probably gonna do as well. But again, buy like a set and then you can just use the most appropriate size. A reminder, the reason that we're having this problem is just because this was single-sided memory and we're replacing it with double-sided, which is a little bit thicker. So we've cut this to size, remove the old one, replace the new pad down on the motherboard. And then hopefully this should now fit and click into place. Oh, I think we've done it. I think we might have done it. There we go, bang, we're in. Now I just need to put the battery pack back. Don't forget to plug it back in though, otherwise you'll have no power. Grab your back plate that has these little thermal pads there and there for the SSDs. Drop it back on, give it a push. Everything should click into place before you screw it down. Change back to the Torx, screw it back. Get everything fitted and flush. And then we should be ready to actually test this and see if it works. Don't go anywhere if you're upgrading an SSD because there is one more step that you're gonna have to do. Otherwise you're gonna get very confused unless you've done it before, but well, that's cheating. And it might get a little bit confused, that's fair enough. We have swapped out some major components. So we'll be doing like a full reboot, reanalyzing what RAM it's got in there, testing timings, making sure everything works, and then of course reassessing the storage. But assuming we've done everything correctly, this should just take a little bit of time and then boot straight back into Windows. And yeah, there we go, we're in the BIOS, which might look a little bit scary, but I would wager that probably means that we've uh, removed the SSD that has Windows on it, which isn't the end of the world. We can just swap it back, but I'm surprised you would think SSD one would be the boot drive. Showing both of our RAM is installed properly and we've got 64 gig. Boot option one, Windows boot manager or disabled. To me, that sounds as if Windows is on here, but evidently not. Right, it's definitely not working. Bear with me a second. Here we go, Gigabyte logo. If we get a nice spinny wheel, that's a good sign. Don't swap out your SSD until you've checked that you've got the right one. Looks good to me. Looks good to me, boys. There we go, bang. I think it's fair to say Windows was installed on SSD2, not SSD1. That is mildly annoying. But the reason I still wanted you to hang around is to show you that if we go into this PC, what's this all about? We've got two drives in here, but only one's showing up. 
Has it not worked? Have we done something wrong? No, there's just one extra step. And I don't know why Windows doesn't tell you this. It is actually a little bit annoying, but you have to initialize and format the disk. So just type in disk, the American way, D-I-S-K, and then it should say create and format partitions. And then when you open up, it says, here you need to initialize the disk. So Windows, it would be great if you told me this when I booted in, but there we go. And you just follow the steps. Just literally click OK, right click, new simple volume, and then just click next on everything. You can give it a name if you want. Uh, I can call it is too hot. And there you go, is too hot has been created and our drive is ready to go. It really is that simple. I hope this video has been useful and I'm glad it didn't go perfectly because it shows you that there are a couple of things that can be unexpected but they are all very simple and straightforward to fix really. If you've enjoyed this video please smash the like button, get yourself subscribed for more like this. I must thank you to Gigabyte if you do want to check out the Aero 16 and learn a little bit more you can links in the description down below. But thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. PC-centric Discord is linked down below. I'm going to have an ice cream now.